The Wahoo Element Bolt has been a cracking bike computer and it still is today considering it was brought out in 2017. But today, Wahoo have just dropped the Wahoo Element Bolt 2.0 with a whole host of updates and features. So let's start with a quick unboxing. So here's the unit and you can see initially it looks very similar, although basically everything's changed on it and in it. So we'll obviously have a deep dive look into that in a minute. So it comes with the same out front aero mount that we saw in the original bolt, but in black this time. Comes with a second bar stem mount that you can attach with zip ties if that's the way you prefer to mount it, or you've got a secondary bike. A few zip ties to mount that on. The all important guides that we read so thoroughly. And a tiny little packet with a tiny little screw in. And this has actually got a nice interesting backstory to it. If you're racing professionally, the UCI regulations give you a minimum bike weight that you're allowed to race with. And anything that's detachable from the bike doesn't actually count towards this. But if you screw this tiny little screw in and connect your bike computer to the out front unit here, then your bike computer is technically part of your bike and therefore will contribute to the total weight. So just a nice touch there from a very small screw. So that's everything in the box. Let's have a look at the unit itself. Now I know Wahoo have recently started making black versions of their products as well, but it's really nice to see that the new unit comes in black too, as it doesn't come in that original gray, which never used to fit in very well with bikes and all the components on it. And the black one just ties in and it all just feels a little bit more integrated, which I really like. They've also lost the blue USB cover at the back, which was a little bit leery and just kept everything a little bit cleaner just with Wahoo at the front rather than Element Bolt and all the text there. So it's just a much cleaner looking unit from the word go. Now it's time to take this little screen cover off. Ooh. Okay, moving on to the screen. This is one of the biggest updates to the unit. And although it's the same size, it is dramatically better in a whole host of upgrades. So without even turning it on, you can see that the screen and the bezel are as one, you could say. So it's just one sheet over the whole top, which A, just makes it look so much nicer. But if you've ever used the original unit, you'll know that the bezel is actually raised on the side. So when it's sitting on the front of your bike and you're using it in bad weather, all the rain and grit and mud and all that sort of stuff sits in there. And you're constantly having to wipe it clean with your finger, which is a bit of a chore and sometimes just makes it even more smeary and dirty. And unfortunately for me, I've only been able to test this in really dodgy English weather. And you can notice straight away that the water just rolls straight off, even from the wind resistance coming at you at the front. So a nice touch. The second thing you notice without even turning it on is the fact that the screen has almost got a slight matte finish and you might not think much to this but if you're cycling out on a really bright day so the opposite of what we just spoke about you sometimes can get some real kind of glare on the screen which you might be able to see here hopefully the camera will pick it up but basically having that matte finish really takes away some of the glare so the screen is even easier to see in those sunny bright conditions so now the most noticeable difference with the Bolt 2.0 is the fact that when you turn the screen on, it's got color. So we've lost the old Tamagotchi style that we had with the original one. So this new screen has 64 different colors in there. And if you've ever used the Wahoo Roam, that's only got eight. So a big improvement on that itself. And obviously a big improvement on the original Bolt, which only has black and white. So where I found it most useful was actually in the navigation as all the different styles and sizes of roads have got different colors and different widths. So you always know what sort of road is coming up next, which is just a really nice touch. It's also really good for heart rate training and Strava live segments and stuff like that, as you can just quickly glance down and basically see if you're doing well or not just from the color on the screen, rather than having to break down and actually having to look at the numbers in front of you. So a really nice touch there as well. So a lot of us will be riding in variable conditions, day, night, sometimes both in the same ride and they've added a ambient light sensor to the 2.0. And basically that means the screen and the LEDs behind it will be working with the conditions that you're in to always be helping you see the screen as clearly as possible. So a really nice update there as well. The customizable LEDs that ran across the top that you could basically have for your heart rate, your average power, speed, all sorts of stuff are in the new device too, but they're hidden and plush like the screen is underneath that one piece bezel, which is a really nice touch. Wahoo are actually saying that there's the same amount of pixels underneath each screen, even though this one's obviously color now, but it really does look like night and day between the difference. And it looks like this one is so much clearer than the original. And I mean, I'm struggling to believe that there's actually the same amount of pixels underneath there because it looks so much better. And I'm sure you'll be able to see that on camera even. Maybe it's just down to that updated user interface and typeface that it just looks so much cleaner. But either way, 
a really nice touch. So the button layout is exactly the same as what we saw on the original Bolt. Super simple and really easy to use, especially when on the bike. And although the layout's the same, all the buttons have been updated slightly too. So the same as the original Bolt, the buttons used to go in like the screen. So they used to capture all the water and muck and they always used to fill up when on those dirty wet rides. But now the new one, they're convex. So like the screen, they're just gonna keep a lot cleaner when on those rides. And it's hard to explain in the video, but all the buttons just feel different. So they have much more of a positive sort of light click function to them rather than the old clunk. And if you're lucky enough to be riding DI2 and you've got the Bluetooth adapter in there, you can use the buttons on the hoods to remotely control the unit, which is a really nice touch. And this just helps you keep your hand on the bars rather than having to take your hand off and fiddle with a bike computer in the middle. As with all Wahoo products, it's super simple to set up. And I actually reckon you could have this out the box and on a ride in less than five minutes. You know what, I actually reckon you could probably do it. Probably do it in two minutes. So as with the whole sort of Wahoo ecosystem, they like you to configure and set up everything on the Wahoo Fitness app on your phone. And that just makes complete sense to me as it's far easier to use a big screen, big touch screen on a phone rather than fiddle around with trying to set things up on bike computers. So as soon as you turn the device on from you, it pops up with a QR code on the app on your phone, you just click add new device, the camera pops up, detects the new device, and it's basically all connected and set up to go straight away, which is awesome. Then within the app itself, you can customize all the pages, the arrangement of data fields, how big and small you want them, and all this sort of stuff on the fly in the app, which is a really nice feature. So the Wahoo Fitness app basically runs exactly the same as it did with the original element, and that's no bad thing as it's a pretty flawless system. One of the things I really like is the fact that once Strava and Komoot are connected to the device, then as soon as you make a route in either of them, then it automatically just updates to the unit itself and then you're just ready to go without any of that extra flapping about. Speaking about connectivity, it's brilliant like the old unit was as well to be fair and it connects obviously directly to your phone really quickly but also to your heart rate monitor, your power meter and even your turbo trainer if you're lucky enough to have a Wahoo kicker. And like I said before, once you've got all those devices connected, you can jump into the app and change the way all the data fields show on the screen when you're on the bike. So you can have your most important data field at the top bigger, and then basically trickle down to the least most important data fields to you at the bottom. And then you can zoom in and out with these two buttons on the side to get the main figures bigger and smaller when you're on the fly. So navigation has been improved in the 2.0 as well. And it's not only that color screen that lets you see the different roads ahead, but there's a few other nice updates too. So you'll remember that the original Bolt came with basically world maps installed but they were just squeezed onto that four gig card in there. And if you wanted to update a map, you had to delete other maps to squeeze an update in, and it was all a bit of a faff. But in the new 2.0, it's been updated to 16 gig inside. So it's just a fun fact that there's actually millions of miles of road stored in that tiny little unit. So it's got a few new features that the original Bolt didn't have, but the bigger brother Rome does have, and this is basically trickled down into the new Bolt. So it's got a back on track feature, which is basically just rerouting. So if you decide you want to take a different route to the one that you've actually pre-installed onto the unit, it will automatically give you a new route around it. Or, e or even if the road's shut in front of you, it will get you back on track and reroute you back onto your original route and get you to your end point. It's got a route to start feature, which can be really handy for a multitude of reasons. So if you've got a mechanical and you just need the quickest route back to the start, it's going to give you that route or maybe more likely, maybe I'm not, I don't know, whoever it's unlikely or not, but you might bonk, get me home, just get me home. It's got the get me started feature, which is really handy. So for example, if you don't know where you're gonna be starting the ride and you've pre-made a route or your friend sent you a route, the unit will now take you to the start of the route. So you can all start together without having to faff around trying to work out how to get there. It's gonna do that bit for you too. It's got retrace your ride, which is just as simple as the fact that you're gonna retrace your ride back to the starting point. But on this topic, another nice feature that's just pre-installed is any route that you have on the device. So you can scroll down and see your routes here. Instead of selecting it, you can just click the next button along, which says Rev, which just means it's just gonna do the whole route in reverse, which is just a really nice feature if you've got a few local laps. You don't need to have a reverse route of that course saved on the unit as well, as you can just run it in reverse directly inside. It's got the take me to feature, super simple, select a point on the map, it's gonna take you there via the quickest route, which is really handy if you just need to get somewhere quickly. And this is one of my favorite ones actually, it's got the save location button, so you can be anywhere, you can be out and about, you could find a new cafe stop that you really like, and then within the unit you can save the location, and it's gonna save it in a list of locations, you can rename them afterwards. So if you ever think you just wanna go there at any point during any ride, you can select it, 
and it's just gonna take you there via the quickest route. So as well as a nice feature to save locations, a nice feature to take you back there when you want to. So I briefly covered earlier that the blue door on the original element has now changed to a black door, but, but underneath that little black cover, more importantly, we've got a USB-C. Now I'm sure you all know this already, but this is better for a few reasons. It just gives you quicker charging. The actual connection with the cable itself is far more secure. So if you're gonna be running an external battery into this, if you're gonna be doing a multi-day trip or, or a super long trip, um, it's gonna be able to charge that up without the cable coming loose. And not so importantly, it's just gonna be able to have quicker data transfer, but you're not gonna be using it for that too often. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Speaking of battery life, it's got the same GPS tracking runtime as this one. So it's gonna track you for 15 hours, which is gonna be more than plenty for most of us. If you're into try, some are, some aren't. I'm definitely not, I'm a sinker and I can't run to save my life, but it's got multi-sport handover. So if you've got a Wahoo rival watch, it's gonna automatically transfer in those transitions from swim to on the bike. So it just makes that transition a little less flaffy and all the more streamlined just to make your life a little bit easier. So a nice feature for the triathletes out there. And lastly, and probably not very importantly at all, we might as well weigh the difference between the two because hey, why not? So we get the trusty kitchen scales out, zero them out. So the original one comes out at 60, just over 60 grams at 61 grams. And the new unit, the 2.0 comes out at 70 grams. So it is roughly nine grams heavier. So if you're a proper weight weenie, maybe stick with the original. As always, it keeps that nice aero design. And I mean, it's not the biggest frontal area on your bike, let's be honest. But I think more importantly, it just looks more in tune with the bike and just gives it a better visual rather than having some super large vintage tablet looking thing up there. So just a bonus to keep things looking smart, really. So what do you reckon, the 2.0? the Wahoo Roam, the whole host of Garmin's, all the other bike computers out there. I'd love to know what your favorite one is and why. Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.